Hey guys, and welcome to the Average Joe Cooking Show. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of old school comfort food breakfast. Biscuits and gravy. Stick around, we're going to have some fun. Well, today we are going to uh, do a little bit more breakfast food when we've done a few of these episodes in the past, but today we're going to be going a little old school. Now, those of you who have watched my show or seen me out at the farmer's market talking to you guys about cooking stuff, everyone knows I will be the first one to admit I am not a baker. So it took me a long time to kind of say, all right, I'll do this episode because it is good. I just, something about it, I just don't like baking. We are doing biscuits and gravy. Uh, this is an old school recipe from my grandmother's cookbook. It requires the use of lard, not shortening, not butter, but lard. Yes, we'll be using boiled pig fat. Anyway, what we need to do to start off is we need to make sure we have a nice clean area. And when I mean clean, I mean sanitized as well. What you can use, you can use a simple little uh, bleach and water solution if you don't have any sanitizing solution in your house. About maybe a cap full to a cup uh, of water. You know, a cap full of bleach to a cup full of water. Soak a rag in it, wipe it down, let it air dry, and that will uh, sanitize your surface pretty decently for what we're going to be doing. Once this is dry, it'll be nice and sanitary and you can go ahead and you can work on it. Now, if you're a baker, then I don't need to talk about this stuff to you because you already know it. Uh, we do need a few small little items. You're going to need a nice little mixing bowl. You're going to need a greased baking sheet and a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you remember, we're all about uh, multitasking here in the Stewart household. Uh, you can use an old wine bottle, a beer bottle, a large can, uh, anything that's round cylindrical that you can roll back and forth over this. A couple things you're also going to want to remember about making really good biscuits is that the less you mess with it, the better the biscuit. And what I mean by messing with it is that you don't want to over knead the dough, you don't want to over mix it. So let's get right into it. First off, what we're gonna do here is we need our bowl. Now we've got a couple things that we need to talk about uh, when it comes to using flour and baking. Uh, those of you who are bakers know what this is. This is a flour sifter. Now, they're great uh, for basically, you know, aerating the dough, making it uh, less clumpy, but they're also, carpal tunnel magnets. So let's get rid of that. What I like to use is a simple little uh, frying screen that uh, really works well. So what we do is we just place that right over the bowl. I have two cups of all-purpose flour. I have a half a teaspoon of salt. I have a half a teaspoon of baking soda and I have a tablespoon of baking powder. Now I'm just going to give that a quick mix and then we're going to sift it. Very, very simple procedure. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go ahead and put this flour on there. Look at that. What am I doing? I don't know, I'm sifting flour. This might seem a little silly, but it has a purpose. I'm just trying to get all the excess off of the edges because if you don't, this flour is just gonna go everywhere. If you have one of those, uh, like a colander. Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? They say that necessity is the mother of invention, so let's do some inventing, shall we? Look at that. 
All right, so forget about the fry screen. Now this will sift that flour nice and easy into that bowl. Well, like I said, I'm not a baker, so yeah, I'm making a mess. Look at that. <laughs> you guys were right here and watched an epiphany happen. That's awesome. All right, now, as you can see, that flour is nice and sifted. It's very, very pretty. And we've got a little extra. We'll just kind of use that to work around the table. Now, to that mixture comes the lard next. Now we're going to cut that in using a pastry knife or pastry blender, whatever this is called. If you don't have one of these, you can use a potato masher, my favorite multitasker. And we need a half a cup of the lard. I know, you guys thought it was gonna be all gross and nasty looking, huh? No, lard is actually very, very clean. It has a very low smoke point. That's something else that I should mention if you ever decide you wanna to try to fry with lard, which I do every now and then. Uh, it does have a very low smoke point, so uh, the stuff that you're going to cook has to be cooked on a lower temperature. Otherwise, you're going to have a house full of smoke. And I am having, there we go. Okay. So stay there. And we're just going to incorporate that into the flour. Oop, get in there. Now you guys can see why I don't like baking. I am not a baker. I'm a messy man. Now, if you have a mix master, obviously this would be a lot easier. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere. You want this to be chopped up into the smallest little bits you possibly can before adding are the final ingredients. The final ingredient is some good old fashioned buttermilk. There we go. Now it's just like a little lumpy in there, so we're going to take the rest of our lard, clean off our pastry cutter. And we're going to grab that buttermilk. We have one cup of buttermilk. Oh, I guess I should get a spoon, huh? Right over here. Now, once this buttermilk has been incorporated into all the flour, you're done. Do not overmix the mixture. Buttermilk is a little thicker, and don't be fooled by the name. <laughs> It's kind of sour. So, if you try to drink it, you're gonna go, what did I do? So, once all that flour has been wetted, wet down, and there's no dry pieces in there, and you're done. There we go, and that's what it should look like. Now I have some extra flour here. We're going to flour up our hands, flour up the rolling pin. You can do it by rolling the rolling pin in there if you want. Uh, I just don't want to knead this stuff as knead it. You don't want to knead the dough too much. You just want to get it into a, a, cons a consistent dough-like fashion. And while you're doing this, I failed to mention that 
you want to go ahead and have your oven preheating to about 100 or 450 degrees. So, how many biscuits will this make? Well, it uh, basically all depends on your style. If you want uh, thick biscuits, or if you want thin biscuits. So we're gonna go with probably about a half inch thickness. I like my biscuits a little bit on the thick side. So, now I'll just roll that out. Oh yeah, there's also one other trick my mom taught me when making biscuits. That's really, really good for it. Let me get all this stuff off my hands. I think it may be a tactile thing. Maybe that's why I don't like baking so much. I don't like the stickiness on my hands. All right, um, another thing that she's taught me, and let's go with 30 seconds. 30, there we go is you get a little bit of the lard, probably about two to three tablespoons of it. And you put it in a bowl, nuke it till it just melts. And let's see if that's melted it. It melts pretty fast, kind of like butter, so you gotta keep an eye on it. Let's go in another 10 seconds. And what you're gonna do is while you're cutting your biscuits, you're gonna just Take that uh, lard at the end and just kind of base the top of your biscuits. Uh, about 10 more seconds. So, let's see, I had a biscuit cutter out here. I just want to get a little bit of flour on the edge of that biscuit cutter. There we go. All right. So we'll just set that aside. We've got a little bit of lard in that bowl. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, we might get seven biscuits out of this. Maybe even eight. Okay. So, cookie sheet. Remember, like I said, you don't want to mess with the biscuits. Once they've... Ugh. Once they've... Uh, come together, you're done. Might get a couple of more out of that easily. So let's make a little bit more room on the sheet for the biscuits. One, two. You think that might be enough for one more biscuit? Let's find out. I guarantee you, when this sucker comes out of the oven, it's not going to be as flaky as those. We've kneaded the heck out of it. And then, of course, you know, you just throw away any excess that you have. 
I'll show you a really quick way to clean off your counter here in a second. All right, so we've got our biscuits made. We're going to brush them with a little bit of that lard. There it is. There we go. And we're going to stick them in the oven for about 15 minutes. Our timer. There we go. All right, real quick, let me clean up this and I'm going to show you a real easy trick to cleaning that up. Get yourself a spatula, or if you have one, my personal little favorite job, the food scraper. And that'll just clean all that junk off, but you know, you can use a spatula if you don't have this. So, let's clean all this up. Why don't you come on back in about a minute or so and we'll be moving on to our next little part, the, the gravy portion. Now, what we've got here Courtesy, and by the way, all of our food is courtesy of our friends at Weinegger's, and we'd like to thank them for uh, sponsoring our program. We've got here some pork uh, country style sausage, and we're going to brown that up in the pan here. We'll crank that sucker up to about medium heat. And uh, give that about two or three minutes to heat up really nice before you put that in there. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of problems. Uh, go back to my favorite multitasker. Now, those of you that understand and watch the show regularly know that I love this instrument because it comes in handy more often than I can think of. Uh, I beat my kids with it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, uh, it's really good for grinding beef um, in the frying pan, pork, beef, chicken. Uh, it's good for mixing mashed potatoes, mixing, uh, shortening into baking products if you don't have a, a pastry cutter. So if you don't have one of these in your arsenal, that's the next thing you need to run down to the dollar store and get yourself one. Doesn't need to be fancy, just needs to work. So we're gonna feel that. Now it's still uh, coming up to temperature. But basically what we're going to be doing here and as we're going to be making some country gravy, sausage gravy, to go with our biscuits and gravy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to brown up the sausage using my favorite multitasker, the potato masher. Uh, we have a little bit of flour, that's about two tablespoons, and that's going to be used to make our country gravy. You also need to get, thank you for reminding me, some milk. And then we need, you can use Whatever kind of milk you have in the fridge, 2%, 1%, skim. But if you want to make the best country gravy, you use whole milk, if not cream. But whole milk is good. And, uh, oh, pepper and salt. And that's pretty much country gravy right there. So you got to remember, for every tablespoon of flour that you use, you want one cup of milk. So, we have two tablespoons here, so we're going to use two cups of milk because biscuits need a lot of gravy. So, we get our measuring cup out, and we'll measure out two cups. Milk. Looks good. And I think that pan is just now ready for the sausage. Yeah. Go ahead and put our sausage in there. Now I let my sausage sit out on the counter before 
Uh, we started cooking it for probably about 30 minutes. It just makes it a little bit easier to uh, maneuver in the pan, softer, more pliable. Because for some reason, sausage, pork sausage, whatever, seems to be really, really stiff right when it comes out of the freezer. So you want to be able to spread that out as quickly as possible and cover up as much surface area on that pan. So now we let that go for a minute and then we'll stir it up some more. So come on back and we'll uh, have this sausage ready and I'll show you how to make that gravy. All right, our sausage is ready. So, um, well, I mean our sausage is ready. Our sausage is still cooking, but our biscuits are ready. So we're gonna pull this guy out. And lo and behold, looks like that back one did flake up a little bit. So we're gonna call those good. We're gonna let that rest for a few minutes. This sausage is just about done. So we're gonna transfer it to a plate. And then plate. And get some paper towels in here. One, two, and three. Now, real quick, I should go ahead and talk to you guys out there in TV land and say that obviously from the ingredients you've seen me put into this thing, it is probably not a low fat, healthy meal. This is meant for some serious outdoor fun. Uh, if you're gonna be out in the cold all day long, this is a good stick to your ribs breakfast. Very high in fat, very high in cholesterol. I'm not gonna lie, but it is so good. So, if you're not eating this every day, go ahead and splurge once in a while. That's my motto. All right, so let's go ahead and move this. And my spoon is in here, so there we go. So, you just want to transfer the sausage over to the pan. Now, you'll notice in the bottom of my pan, there's those little brown bits. We want those in there. We want to leave those in there, because that's going to make for some good gravy. <laughs> good gravy. I'm a Peanuts character. Wait, that's good grief. Never mind. All right. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of oil and fat left in the bottom of that pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain just a hair of it off because I need to keep at least two tablespoons for the, uh, for the gravy. So I'm just going to spoon out because if I just dump this, I'm going to get some drizzle down the side of my pan. I'm going to put it back on that burner and I'm just going to have smoke all over in my kitchen. We're just going to come over to the sink. I'm going to spoon out until I have about two tablespoons left in there. Good. We're gonna grab that flour, the two tablespoons. I'm gonna dump it in there. I'm gonna get my trusty little companion out again. And all we're doing is we're trying to pick up as much of those little brown bits off the top, or off the bottom of the pan, I mean. We're browning up that flour, good. Now, we're gonna add our milk. So add it in all at once, just like so. Now we're gonna crank that sucker up so we can get this to boil as quick as possible. Now constantly move this, do not stop, do not pass go. All right, there we go. And you'll feel it starting to get smoother as you spin because uh, all, those bot all those brown bits are coming off the bottom of the pan. They're incorporating into the gravy mixture. Now, I forgot to mention that we needed our salt in there. Just a couple shakefuls because you're going to just taste it, test this later. Now, I actually like a lot of pepper in mine and so do my boys. So every time I put pepper in it, no matter how much I put in, I always get the, we need to pour more, more pepper in there, Dad. Okay. But I think probably an eighth of a tablespoon for most people, that's good. Eighth of a tablespoon. Eighth of a teaspoon, sorry. 
See, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I just kind of get lost in my work sometimes. Just keep staring at those biscuits. So once this comes up to boil, now, the thing you gotta remember if you're not too familiar with gravies, especially like country gravies, country gravy is very thick. It's not like your traditional gray brown gravy that you would pour over a meatloaf or your turkey gravy that you pour over your Thanksgiving meal. This stuff is almost gonna have the consistency of pudding. Maybe a little bit thinner than pudding. But you can see how it's boiling now. I just wanna keep moving it because I don't want this to burn. I'll let that boil for just a second longer. I'm gonna take it off the heat. Use my trusty Ugg glove as a pot pad, pot pad. I'm gonna let that set. And as it sets, it's going to get thicker. Then we'll add our sausage back to it. As a matter of fact, actually, we can do that right now. Let's put that away. There we go. Okay. Kind of reminds me of my days back when I was in the Marines. We had a yummy breakfast meal that was served in the chow hall called SOS or cream chipped beef on toast. Those of you who are veterans or military enthusiasts know what SOS stands for. But it uh, kind of looks like that except SOS is made with hamburger and a little bit of onion. So this is nice and thick. And let that cool for a second while I plate up some biscuits. And one, and there's two. I want to see how flaky these biscuits are. Oh yeah, nice and tender on the inside, crispy to crust on the outside. There we go. Just open those suckers up. Nice heaping spoonful. You pair this up with a little bit of scrambled eggs or whatever, uh, even some jam for biscuits uh, without the gravy. And let's see what we've done here. Hmm. Hmm. My grandmother would be proud. Well, I hope you give this a shot. It's very delicious, like I said. Don't eat it very often, but every now and then, when you feel like treating yourself or your family to something nice and home cooked, I hope you enjoy this recipe. Till then, happy eating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.